Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another build video. Today we are doing a Gear of Falcons Halberd build because I am just a sucker for Void Hunter. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this build. We have Shadow Shot Deadfall as our super. For our abilities, we have Gambler's Dodge Triple Jump because that's just the best jump in PvE, in my opinion. We have Withering Blade and Swarm Grenade, and you'll see why in a second here because essentially we're just going to be looping these abilities as much as we can because we're using gear falcons hobrook stylish executioner is mandatory for this build it is one of the few things that is mandatory for this build because you need it for volatile next we have winter shroud this is just another way to apply that debuff plus you're going to be able to freeze your targets using both winter shroud and your withering blade in concert and for the fragments, here we have Facet of Dawn. Powered melee hits against targets makes you radiant. Powered melee final blows make you and your near nearby allies radiant. And a great reason why we have that in the first place is so that we can proc Facet of Sacrifice, which is going to allow you to get bonus darkness transcendence energy when you have an Arc Solar or Void buff. Radiant would classify as one of those buffs so you're going to be getting bonus darkness transcendence energy. Next is Facet of Hope. While you have said elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. So again, you're going to be able to dodge near enemies and get your Withering Blade back. So that's just another way to play into that loop. Next we have Facet of Balance, which is rapidly defeating targets with light damage. Rents melee energy. So when you're killing enemies with your Swarm Grenade, you're going to be getting your Withering Blade Laid back, is <laughs> like withering Wade, <laughs> and then uh, rapidly defeating targets with darkness damage will give you grenade energy. So again, you're playing into that loop with your withering blade. When you defeat targets, you're gonna get your swarm grenade back. Last but not least, since we're using our grenade so much, facet of mending is gonna be nice to have on, just to get that extra healing because hunters can be a little bit squishy. Uh, this build isn't necessarily as good as Liar's Handshake build is right now with Prismatic, but this is a fun alternative if you just want to use something else, because Void Hunter is really strong, and this is uh, honestly not a bad build for day one. Uh, it really depends uh, on what the enemies are like in the raid, uh, and so on. Anyways, let's get into weapon choices. You're going to need at least one Void weapon. I highly suggest Recluse, especially if you have Repulsor or Desperate Measures, or in my case, you have both. You're going to get a Void Overshield when you debuff targets, which you're going to be doing with Stylish Executioner. You're going to be throwing your grenade and melee a bunch, so Desperate Measures, again, is going to help play into that loop. And Dominability, I believe with Prismatic, is going to be tied to your Super. So since we're using a light super in this case, you're going to be getting grenade energy back. So again, playing into that loop. The call I simply have here because it hits like a truck. This thing is amazing and I'm in love with it. Uh, this is simply just another way to get your darkness transcendence energy up. Plus, it's just a solid, solid sidearm. Uh, I would like to get golden tricorn on this when I have it craftable. But this is just a good placeholder role for now, especially because I'll be using my grenade a bunch. And the hatchling helps with just a little extra ad clear. Now for heavy, you can use deterministic chaos. I was trying colony out a bit. It was a little fun. If you don't have recluse or deterministic chaos, switching to edge transit and maybe putting like a, a graviton lance here. You could also do word of crota. This new hand cannon, which is a world drop is listen don't sleep on it it's a two hitting burst a heavy burst like warden's law it is so fun so if you if you get that you could slap that on truth teller is a, a decent option this uh fusion from witch queen from the uh, savathun's throne world i don't know why i said the savathun's throne world the only throne world out there uh this one also is just fun in general and also if you're doing stuff on the Pale Heart, there is this buff I'm going to show you guys real quick. In the Traveler's Blessings, you have the Traveler's Diffraction, which defeating combatants with void damage has a chance to create void seekers that tracks to nearby targets and suppresses them. So you can get suppressing, uh, at least on the Pale Heart, in concert with the weakening and stuff. Also, the artifact plays heavily into void this season. 
which is why I highly suggest using this build, you have the Void Hegemony Artifact perk, which is while you have a Void or Prismatic subclass equipped. Defeating weakened targets provides a small Void Overshield. So let's say I'm not using my Recluse, let's say I'm using Mahis, I will still get a small Void Overshield thanks to my Artifact mod. And we also have Expanding Abyss. Void sources deal increased damage to weakened targets. I have multiple ways to weaken stuff, right? I'm already using Stylus, Stylish uh, Executioner in my subclass. Also, if you have Deterministic Chaos on, that will weaken. You could also throw on, if you wanted, you could throw on Snare Bomb to also weaken targets. This build has so much synergy with the artifact. I highly, highly suggest it. That is the one thing that maybe the Liar's Handshake build doesn't have. But even then, the Liar's Handshake build is just so, so good. Plus, you could pair it uh, with this perk as well. Uh, like, uh, listen, I'm not going to say this build is as good as Liar's Handshake, but it's definitely as fun as it is. Uh, the, you, this is definitely a, way, a more weapon-centric build that might do a little bit better in endgame content because, you know, going around and punching stuff can be a little risky, especially in endgame stuff. But anyways, let's get into some gameplay with the build so you guys can see it for yourselves.
all right there's some gameplay with this build in action uh let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video leave a like comment what your favorite prismatic build is so far this season i'm excited to play the campaign on my other characters get into some build crafting there uh the possibilities are simply endless uh anyways uh i'll see you guys in the next one